Greetings in the name of Christ. I'm Walter Meyer III. Great to be with you. And today we will go over the Old Testament reading for Epiphany. And this reading is Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. First, we will translate the Hebrew text, and then I'll have some exegetical thoughts. All right, let's go to the Hebrew text. Kum, the verb arise. Notice that this is an imperative feminine singular. Same thing with the next word, or, an imperative feminine singular, and so on through our text. Translation, arise, be light, key, because your light has come. The verb bo, u kavod, Yahweh, and the glory of Yahweh on you, zarach. The verb zarach can be translated either has risen or has shown. So it has the sense arise or shine. Either one is fine. Verse 2. Ki hene, for behold, the darkness, translating that literally, hoshek, darkness, has the definite article, covers, the verb kasa, the earth, wa arafel, arafel, thick darkness, leumim, the peoples, wa alayik, but on you, again the verb zarak, has arisen or arises, it's a imperfect and therefore would have a present or future nuance, but on you arises or shines Yahweh, and His glory on you is seen or appears. The verb ra'ah ra at the end here as a nifal, therefore a passive sense, is seen or that could be appears. Kavod, of course, is glory. Going to verse 3. Halak, so to come, considered now as a wow consecutive perfect, they will come nations to your light, to smooth it out. Uh, nations will come to your light, so now we have the noun or with the suffix, melakim, and kings to the brightness, naga, of your shining or of your rising. Verse 4. The verb nasa, imperative, feminine, singular, lift up round about your eyes and see. All of them are gathered. So the verb kavats, this is a nifal perfect, third common plural. They come, the verb bo, to you. Your sons, so the noun bane, your sons from a distance come, the verb bo again, and your daughters, so banoth with the suffix, on the, now the word sod means side. Here it has the sense hip. And then the following word, the verb aman, uh, this is also a nifal here. That would have the sense usually made firm, made sure, but here, in this context, it has more than nuance, be carried. So, and your daughters on the hip are carried. Going to verse 5. Then, the verb ra'ah, you will see the verb nahar. Uh, this can be understood as shine, and you will shine. The verb pakath very often has the sense to be in dread, but here we can have, in this context, the translation, be in awe. Now the subject of this follows, your heart will be in awe, and then the verb rachav, which usually means to be wide, uh, here we can have with heart as the subject, and also in this context, uh, be enlarged, uh, be wide in the sense of, you know, be relieved, or it could have the sense swell, understanding swell with joy. Going on, ki, and then the verb hafak in the nifal, because it will be turned over alike to you, or on you, but here better to you, hamon. And here we can say in this context, hamon, 
the abundance of the sea. The abundance of the sea will be turned over to you. And now next, Hail, the wealth of nations uh, will come to you. The wealth of nations will come to you. Uh, and then this is actually a singular, but it's going here with a plural verb. Uh, the wealth of nations, uh, those things making up the wealth of the nations will come to you. And then finally, verse 6. This first word here uh, has the sense of a multitude. Uh, it can have the sense of abundance, quantity. Here, a good translation would be multitude. Uh, a multitude of gemalim, camels, will cover you. So the verb kasa here, uh, kaf, samik, he, uh, with the suffix at the end, uh, this is a pl imperfect, will cover you. Now, bikre midyan. Uh, there's a little, a little bit of uncertainty about this word bikre. This is a construct plural. Uh, usually it's rendered as young camels or dromedaries. Uh, young camels of Midian and Ephah. So again, to translate this from the beginning, a multitude of camels will cover you, young camels of Midian and Ephah. Kulam, all of them or all of those from Sheba will come. And then going on to the last portion here, Zahav, gold and Livona, gold and frankincense they will carry. And finally, Tehiloth, uh, the word for praises, and then Yahweh, and the praises of Yahweh. Now, the last verb here, Basar, this is a PL imperfect, and this verb, Basar, has the sense to bring good news, to herald good tidings. And so different translations are possible here at the end. For example, and the praises of Yahweh they will proclaim. Or this translation, and they will bring good news, the praises of Yahweh. All right. Thus far, the Hebrew text, and now some exegetical thoughts as we go through this. Going back to verse 1, arise, be light. Uh, feminine singular imperatives. The subject, Zion, spiritual Zion, and thus the feminine singular imperatives. We're looking ahead in this text to the New Testament era. And therefore, spiritual Zion could also be referred to as the Christian church. And now spiritual Zion is directed, arise and be light, because your light has come. Your light has come, a reference to Jesus Christ, the Savior, the light of the world. And we think of all the references to Jesus in the New Testament as light, especially in the Gospel of John. And the glory of Yahweh on you has arisen or has shone. And likewise, with the coming of Jesus, the glory of Yahweh, the glory of God, was revealed. We can think of John chapter 1, verse 14. And the glory of God can be considered as the attributes of God as they come forth for people to behold all of them or some of them or any single one of God's attributes. And certainly Jesus Christ revealed the attributes of God. So a reference to the coming of Christ and spiritual Zion thus arising and being light. And how is that possible? Well, Jesus Christ once again is the light and he brings or gives light. His light, which he brings and gives his word and the blessings of salvation. So then, in turn, spiritual Zion becomes a light. Why? Christ dwells within spiritual Zion. Spiritual Zion has the blessings of salvation. And spiritual Zion has the word of 
Christ. Uh, think of Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And so, having this light of the light, Jesus Christ, reflecting the light of Christ, spiritual Zion becomes, so to speak, a little light next to the great light, Jesus Christ. Similar thoughts then with regard to the glory of Yahweh. Going on to verse 2, For behold, the darkness covers the earth. Darkness here is an image for unbelief, spiritual darkness, and the corresponding misery. Same thought with, and thick darkness, the peoples. So the world, you know, apart from Christ and from the word of Christ is in unbelief, darkness. But on you, Yahweh has risen. Now, a reference back to spiritual Zion. But on you, Zion, Yahweh has risen, and his glory on you is seen, or in you is seen. So the same thoughts as we had with regard to verse 1. And spiritual Zion then, reflecting the light, the glory of God. Verse 3, nations will come to your light. And so now we have a worldwide outlook with this word goyim. Nations will come to your light. So spiritual Zion shines forth this light of Christ, this light of of the gospel, and this is like a magnet. It's a drawing, attracting power. Nations then come to this light. So this is a reference of the gospel endeavors of the Christian church. The word goes out. As a result, people are brought to faith and brought into spiritual Zion. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your shining. Or rising. So the same thought there. By the way, reference to kings, the powerful ones in society, the, the top of society, if they are included, that means everyone else as well. Verse 4. So a worldwide outlook, this is a tremendous missions text. Verse 4. Lift round about your eyes and see. All of them are gathered. They come to you. And so a reference again to these worldwide conversions, uh, people then being brought, gathered into the Christian church. Your sons from a distance come. So a reference now to spiritual sons, those brought to faith. And from all over the world, from a distance, they come. They're coming into spiritual Zion. And your daughters on the hip are carried. Uh, the same thought there. And by the way, this is Old Testament language to describe New Testament reality. And so the Old Testament language, picturing a pilgrimage festival when the people of Israel would come to the central sanctuary in Jerusalem, to Zion, that hill on which the temple was built. So that is the imagery behind this language to depict New Testament realities. Verse 5, then you will see, then you, Zion, spiritual Zion, will see and you will shine. Uh, this is shining with joy at all these people being converted and coming into spiritual Zion. Uh, your heart will be in awe at the power of God, at the power of the gospel, the means of grace and be wide, be enlarged, be relieved, or swell, swell with joy. Because there will be turned over to you the abundance of the sea. And now we have the image, you know, the Gentiles being converted, people from all over the world coming into spiritual Zion, and they bring with them their offerings, offerings to God presented to the church. And so this imagery, the abundance of the sea. Next phrase, and the wealth of nations will come to you. So the people bring what they have, their possessions, their wealth, into the church to give to the church for the glory of God. In essence, of course, they are giving to the Lord. Uh, verse 6, 
a multitude of camels will cover you. See, this is thinking again back to you know, the Old Testament times, the time of Isaiah, and thinking of Judah, in which then was the city Jerusalem, in which was the temple, the central sanctuary. So then the idea is all these people being brought to faith are then coming to Judah, so to speak. Uh, their camels are carrying this wealth, all these good products. And there are so many converts, then thus there are so many camels bringing their offerings. And these camels, so to speak, are covering Judah. They cover you, uh, covering Zion. Uh, dromedaries or young camels of Midian and Ephah, all of them are all of those from Sheba they come. So thinking of outlying areas, distant areas, but now coming to spiritual Zion. And their offerings described in this last line of verse 6, gold and frankincense they bear or they carry. And of course, with those words, gold and frankincense, we think of the wise men in Matthew chapter 2 and the gifts they brought to the baby Jesus. Gold and frankincense they carry, and the praises of Yahweh they proclaim, or they proclaim good news, the praises of Yahweh. And this praising of Yahweh indicates that they are converts and coming into the church. And in the church, in spiritual Zion, singing, proclaiming these praises of Yahweh. So, a tremendous text for Epiphany and this theme of God's love for all people and the gospel going out into the nations and people from all over the world being brought into spiritual Zion. God's blessings as you meditate on this text and as you preach it. The Lord be with you.